And you get a horrible hat as a souvenir. Uh, one of the teeth that was until recently in the mouth of the leader of the stripy hat gang. This hat's terrible, and everyone will hate you if you wear it. Minus three moxie. That's funny. What did that say? Danger kitchen. Poor chef is chained to the wall. His eyes widen if you approach. Hey, you're not one of them. Are you here to rescue me? Sure. He throws his hand into yours and shakes vigorously. I'm Doug. Arizona. How do you do, Doug? Well, I've been chained to this dank cave for weeks cooking for those stripy hat idiots. You know, one of the worst part is a perfectly good oven eight feet to my right and then shelf of perfectly good ingredients eight feet to my left. That's not the worst part. This chain is four feet long. That's rough. I know, right? There I was, fresh out of culinary school with a million meat idea in my head. Now here I am, four feet shy of my dreams, cooking the same pot of soup over and over again. What million meat idea? You promised not to steal my idea, right? Yeah. All right, it's a new kind of sandwich. Or taco. It's so revolutionary, I'm not quite sure where it fits in the whole hand food taxonomy, to be honest. In the middle, there's a sausage, but the sausage is made from the cheapest possible parts of the pig, ground up so finely you could never identify it. And it's served into a long split roll, which soaks up the grease so you can't help tell, tell how fatty the sausage is. And the best part, the name. You ready to hear the name? I call it the Hot Dog. What do you think? It's great. He beeps. Thanks. Not that this even matters, even if I did get out of this cave. Uh, get off this chain, there's no point in hanging around in this empty cave making hot dogs just for myself. I don't even like the taste. You could set up shop in dirt water. Brilliant. You're a genius, Arizona. Arizona. Hot dogs all for sale all day, every day I'll make a mint. That is an idea. What if I added mint with the sausage texture? Mixture. Um, there are some foods, I want to say Indian foods, that have mint in meat. Um, I've never had them, but like, people swear by it, so maybe it's awesome. And maybe, I, maybe I'm just ignorant, you know? That's always the, that's always the thing. You're never too old to be wrong. You could always be wrong about something. Uh, that's that then. Nothing on this shelf looks good. All right. Danger bar. Empty bottles. Oh. Cheap whiskey, tequila, and cheap wine. Ooh, I'm going out for dinner with my friends tonight. Maybe I should have some. He had a jaw harp in his pocket. Maybe they killed him for playing the jaw harp too much. Twanger. You can plunk it if you like. You stick the twanger in your mouth and plunk it best you can. You plunk your twanger to beat the band. You plunk your twanger and plunk it some more. You plunk your twanger some more. You cannot stop plunking it. You'll be plunking this twanger till the day you die. You cannot stop plunking it. Alright, we appear to be looping now. Cheap wine, moxie, cheap tequila, mysticality, and muscle. Let's do that one. One tequila, one tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor. Just kidding, it looks like you stopped this one at one. It did kind of taste like a floor. You feel like you could think your way out of any situation right now. Like if you accidentally knocked over a whole roll of horses and the cowboys were really mad at you. I gotta eat something at some point. I'm hungry. I should either have like uh, some yogurt or some peas. I have some leftover curry. Not with mint or anything. I have a uh, Japanese curry, not Indian curry. Again, that's assuming that, uh, how are there, Bucephalus? Let's go. Again, that's assuming that, um, Indian curry is the one with mint in it. And I'm not misremembering. There's a skull sort of rolling down the road to you. Uh, like directly towards you. And when you step to one side, it swerves to match. Oh, they're quick. Yeah, we didn't get the jump on them. A tumble skull is what we're facing. Since he's closing the distance to melee, I don't think putting up um, bulletproof cover will help me. We got skull chips. You punted that skull right into the sunset. Itty bitty bits of someone's skull. Once they were good for keeping somebody's brain salsa inside, but not anymore. Manifest Destiny Railroad. Well, now that's one locomotive that ain't going anywhere anytime soon. I wonder if we can help. 
There's a fancy looking fellow in a white hat in the back there. He's probably the one in charge. Okay. <laughs> People have already boarded. That's good. He's too busy playing with his watch to get any work done. I bought it from this gal who uh, runs a store south of here. Oh, Button Willow? Button Willow Mc... Mc something? Where is it? I can't miss it. It's right in between a cactus and a different cactus. Button Willow McKittrick's store. Thanks. Don't mention it. Mention it. No, really. Thanks a lot. Sure, man. Don't mention it. I mean it. I appreciate you telling me where the store is. Really. It's no trouble at all. Don't mention it. I mean it. I've run out of ways to thank you, but I really do want to know. I'm grateful for your help. His face turns red. Do not mention it. He looks about ready to punch you if you don't knock it off. All right. I'll mention it. She's not getting much track lady, but she's an expert whistler. Hi there, Smelvin. Hi there. Who's in charge of this outfit? If I'm being charitable, I'd say the fellow in the white hat is the foreman. He points to the man next to the huge pile of rocks. If you're not, I'd say that paper-backed idiot over there in the absurd white hat is the fellow that you are looking for. Thanks. Are you in charge? I was wondering if there's anything I can do to help. You want to know some? I love trains. Oh? Since I was a boy, huge magical roared iron beasts. Magical to me. Oh, magnificent iron beasts. And they're magical to me. Like dragons. When the opportunity arose to take management of this rail line, I jumped on it like a shot. You know what I learned? Organizing and building and running these operations is one of the most amazing pain of the ass you will ever imagine. You want to help? Congrats, you're the new foreman. I'm going home to play with my models. See you later, Gomez. The old piston monster. The good old brass shark. The piston bison. The good old screaming cabbage. The steaming monster. The good old steaming rhino. Uh, I guess I'm the boss now? I suppose you can't be any worse than the last clown. Name's Smee, I'm your assistant. Oh god, I forgot his name was Smee. I was just calling him Smelvin because of his dork glasses. His dorky round glasses. Wearing round glasses. Round glasses. It's stupid. Well, I'm sure you didn't miss seeing this giant pile of rocks blocking our path. The surveyors say there isn't another suitable mountain pass, so we cannot reroute even if we had the months it would take. According to my calculations, we could dynamite it. Uh, without too much worry. Problem is, that'll take a lot of dynamite. A whole year's worth. We used to keep that much on hand, uh, but a pack of goblins stole it all. I'm glad to hear it. They're holed up over in Gustafsson Gulch. Rough place. You might want to spend some time getting the land and honing your fighting skills before you head in. Especially if you're going to go in guns blazing. We don't need that specific dynamite, though. And you can lay your hands on it be fine, so long as there's enough. So, um... This is, this is, a, uh, this is a game mechanic that I actually like a lot. Where it's like, all right, main quest. This is the main quest. Here it is, you know? No entry. Real jail. The guy shouts, visiting hours are over, and... Also, huge mess in here. Big uh, prisoner party. Bar's closed for piano repairs. Visiting hours are over. Non-fake horse sales. The hostel's on vacation right now. Genuine TNT sandwiches. It's condemned. Not safe to go in there. Town hall for a real town. Uh, that house is haunted. You duck into the outhouse to plan your next move. While you're pondering, you notice something weird. The outhouse has a back door. The back side of the hideout. This is the back of the jail. It turns out it's flat plywood like a theatrical set. The ropes that knock holding this thing up don't look very strong. You could knock it over, but you should hold off until the right moment. It's a hefty load. I should get a t-shirt that says that. What it actually means is up to you. This doesn't seem safe at all. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a thing where it's like, this is the... Like, this is just inherently the way that the game works. Uh, you see the imposing silhouette of an army fort on the horizon. Fort All Dead. Somehow I saw it in the opposite direction of where I was. Another new ranch out this way. The Butterfield Ranch. Dairy Farm. We'll check it out. I think there's another ranch. He doesn't seem to notice you. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Pardon me. Excuse me. Strategy. Giant map of the region. 
this little table has model of the region on it. Nice. Heavy rain sucks, but I do like that you can flush every toilet and go pee as every single character. It's the little things, you know? The lock on this foot locker has rusted away to nothing. Hardtack and smell insults. I need to make hardtack at some point. I've heard so much about it. This cracker is optimized for shelf life instead of taste. This is a bottle of foul smelling ammonia crystals. Oh, that's what smelling salts are? Jesus, no wonder they smell like... Like that. <laughs> what do you say, you know? Item used in combat gives you an additional action point. Hardtack and whiskey. N yeah, needles. Desiccated glands. Pureed mildew and syrup. Candied mildew. Crushed maggots. Pickled fish eyes with capers. Stewed dandruff and soda. Alright, another one of those randomized ones. I wonder if you could do this game with more randomization. This trash can smells terrible. Not without stench resistance. Ooh, we're parallaxing on this. I guess there's almost nothing on the floor that needs to stretch. Everything is like flat, you know? There's a receipt, a robe receipt, evil looking leather bound tome, introductory next max. The last thing's a little diary, which you decide to leave in there in case the owner comes back looking for it. It seems to have been written by one of the necromancer's cultists. He and several others were reanimating the dead soldiers, and the theory an undead army would be a literal undead army. The best undead army. It's a literal undead army. The hitch in the plan came when they raised the officers, who decided they weren't going to take orders from a bunch of weirdo civilians. The last entry suggests the authors and his cohorts were abandoning their station, reporting the act to the necromancer, but it ends abruptly in the middle of a sentence. No names on these stones. And a bunch of pepperoni mold. This mass grave is teeming with skeletal riflemen. They don't seem interested in getting out, but you could jump in there if you're itching for a fight. Damn. I'll have to break his bones fairly quickly. Jeez. I guess the north side of the map is like harder. It's like your mother always told you, don't jump into a pit filled with skeletal rifleman if you're not pretty sure you can do it without getting your ass handed to you. You get so angry about losing that fight, you pass out. You wake up in the next morning in your bed, Susie must have carried you back here after you got knocked out. You're sore, but not worse for wear. You're hungry and sober, though. This is a black-covered book written in black ink on black paper, a primer in the arts of southwestern necromancy, otherwise known as Nexmax. Gives you the grinning skull skill. Right. There's like a mechanic where, um, something will definitely happen. What happens? Reminds you of college. College Rather, your buddy from grade school who died of cirrhosis. Grade school, Kansas, where you once spent a summer at camp. <laughs> the swerve of college, grade school, and the town grade school, by the way. It's pretty funny. I like that. And, uh, let's eat, uh, hard tack. I'm now tack hard. You now fortify with hard tack, making it harder to attack you. Hey, Lloyd. Oh, yeah, we'll, uh, come back. Pick the lock. You open the hatches and check out the machinery inside. There's obviously something wrong, given the plinking and spring and clicking noise and coming out of the gears. It looks complicated, but I see what's wrong. You recalibrate some springs and rearrange gears, and the machinery op starts operating smoothly. The music improves immediately. Nothing to it. Hey, Lloyd. I fixed the piano player. I thought so. He sounds much better. I'd give you a free room in exchange, but you've already got one. Need any help? Nope. Right as rain. Luckily, I passed out on purpose, so that means that I can now go to these areas. Sponsored by LT and T. Whoops. Miss click. Sorry.
That's the tattooed tooth of the leader of a stripy hat gang, all right. I recognize it anywhere. Thanks, a bundle. Wanted the black hat bandits for horse theft and the selling of counterfeit glue. Uh, headed north towards the old millinery. Nothing good can come of criminals with hat-making machinery. You mark the location of the millinery on your map and spend some time saying millinery over and over again. Millinery, millinery, millinery. It's a good word. Let's go to Button Willow store. Off to one side, you see a covered wagon and small family settlers who look upset. You folks okay? We're on our way to Dirtwater, but our wagon broke down. That's rough. You're liable to get attacked by bandits out here. Or snakes, or coyotes, or ghosts, or other things that live on uh, stranded travelers. Uh, we could have Susie fix the wagon. Susie, you know about wagons and stuff. Think you can fix this? Reckon. Susie crawls under the wagon, pokes around for a minute, and then reappears and chucks a dead rat over her shoulder. Rat and carburetor. Should be fine now. Oh, thanks. Groovy. 